Do you know what? That's probably not as much of a dramatic entrance as what I wanted. Let's try this. Yes, much better. Silhouette, the Atlas 2.0. That is my mech. Let's get proper lighting on that. So this is my beloved mech, my 2.0 Atlas, and it has served me well, super well. In fact, I literally used this the other day because it's got a load of flies and everything on it. So today will be of no surprise to you that I'm talking about Rurok, an Atlas. What I have, haha, <laughs> is the 3.0, which is gonna elevate Rurok one more step into being what I consider at the forefront of helmet manufacturing because they listen to the consumer very much so. So where better to talk about a Rurok helmet than on a half-built BMW R100? Slap it on there. So I have been a Rurok rider ever since Atlas 1. So Atlas 1 came out, Atlas 1 was a decent helmet. Then they released the Atlas 2.0, which was a step up again. And that was, I mean, the finish on it and the consideration and everything like that. Now they bring out 3.0. What I know of the 3.0, especially what I've heard and what I've seen of that intro video and everything, is that 3.0 is just another level again. Not to say that the 2.0 isn't still a decent helmet, because it is. I will still be wearing my mech, because I'm absolutely in love with that style, that pattern. First of all, I can see that the box is actually very different. Let's see what's in here. Aha! I mean, first of all, the box has been reconsidered. Not that you're going to be as interested in the box as what there is on the inside, but I think it's a bit more of a user experience with this, the way it just kind of unwraps itself. But that's the first noticeable difference about how this is delivered. I do like that nice little rock logo in the middle there. Atlas 3.0. Ah, so this is a little carry case of some sort. Let's see what's in this. Well, this is actually quite nicely considered. Got some Rurok stickers in there. And then, check that out, a Rurok 3.0 instruction manual. And that is something that's in the past with the Rurok. It has just been a poster with some instructions on the back, which fits all the instructions, but this just kind of makes it feel a little bit more premium again. Put that to one side. Ah, here it is. So inside my box, I have got a few more extras that I've ordered. So there's the pin lock insert. The pin lock insert there will actually stop your lens from fogging up. Got a lens change in there, but the bit that you're interested in is in here. 3.0. Should I open it? Should I just tease it a little bit more? Let's tease it. Sorry, that's a little bit too much teasing. Let's open it up. Oh my word. Look at this beauty. I mean, I did request the Brute because I've got a thing about orange and yellow. I mean, this is very, very golden. It's not a metallic gold print, but it's kind of really rich mustardy yellow in its feel and it's killer. First of all, it's a Rook Atlas on it. It feels, I don't know if this is just perception, but it feels a little bit lighter. I can see one thing straight off is that the actual build quality of this helmet appears to be better because, again, I'm comparing it to the 2.0. I mean, the 2.0, again, had good build quality. Maybe I'm just thinking about the version one in my head. These little vents actually sit inside where in the past, I think it might have been version one, was actually kind of sitting on the outside, but these are nicely recessed in. A bit better that here. You can see where it's recessed in. It's just an altogether bare build quality. Even down here, everything just seems to be a lot better finished. Quality control on Rurok, I know, is even stricter now. So that might be it. The main characteristics of the Atlas 3.0 is this. 
if I can get it off. This all in one lens. So on the previous models, as you can see up here, it has that cap at the back to house the lens. This doesn't, this goes all the way. That I believe is one of the features to eliminate wind noise. Still has an incredibly wide aperture. It is one of the widest apertures of a helmet that I've come across of a full face helmet. This is different down here. So this locking mechanism, again, 2.0 has that little notch there. The 3.0, doesn't. It seems, in fact, the rubber around it, the more I look into it, the more I actually realize how much difference there is. The rubber around it is a lot more molded and that, I think, is one of the other things that they've done to lower wind noise. So wind noise has been reduced by a significant percentage on this. But just feeling out then, this has actually got different stage openings, which is brilliant. It actually clips onto different stages, that's perfect. And then it does ping down at the bottom quite securely. Let's turn this over. I mean, I can't see anything else outside that really... Aha, yes, I can actually, oh, wow. Do you know what? This has completely been remodeled. So this is another thing that I know. These bits are now actually rubberized. That's interesting, where well, they were plastic before. This, I know that they replaced the screwed shockwave system with just a magnetic one so you can easily slot it in and out and that is as easy as that coming out you've got your shockwave system bits in here you've got your antenna and your jack to plug in your shockwave system a big noticeable difference do you know what let me get my 2.0 here put it down there so you can instantly see what the difference is 2.0 these emergency cheek pads have been there since version 2.0, but you can see that the main difference is the actual lining on the inside. The lining is just far more superior on the version 3. You have got this leather finish down there. The emergency cheek pad removal is slightly thinner as well, slightly smaller. The 3.0 doesn't have this kind of neck warmer round here, but it does seem to be a lot kind of tighter on lot finish where you've got this perforated stuff on the 2.0 going all the way around you don't have any of that so it's, it's just more of a premium finish you've got this nice stitching going on on the inside it just feels a lot more there you go that's the inner lining on the 2.0 still feels soft but on the 3.0 it feels really luxurious just gonna have a look on the inside here you can see that the inside of this lining. You've even got a nice little Rurock emblem in the inside. I mean, that's just a nice little finishing touch, but you can see how it's all quilted around the inside. So in terms of comfort, that is a vast improvement. Everything seems to be tucked in a lot neater around the edges here. Not that they weren't on the 2.0. Comparing it visually, it just seems to be a lot more tucked in. So this is a lot more considered, a lot more tucked in. The 2.0, is also tucked in, but it's just not as considered. There's just a level of perfection to this. That is incredible. Even that little logo at the back there. Helmet hair at the ready. That actually feels a lot. Let me get my head out. That actually feels a lot easier to put on. It slides over and we still got the fid lock at the bottom. Still magnetically clips into place, so that's perfect. It seems to be a lot more room for my ears. There's a lot of room for my ears in here. I mean, you can even, you can see there, if you did wear glasses, you could even put your glasses in there quite comfortably. Just in that little recess there, that's quite nicely considered. Aperture, like I said, is massive on it. I can just about see the edge there. And now that the lens doesn't have that little black bit, I'm sure that'll probably impair it even less. It feels so nice. So soft, I can't feel any kind of intrusive foam or anything there that I have had with previous helmets. Not Ruhrock, I've got to say, but other brands have had this kind of like foam bit digging into my head and it was really annoying. But this is so nice. It just feels a lot nicer. It feels, it feels like it's not squeezing down my cheeks as much. It still is, well, it is on my cheeks. In fact, you can see on here my actual cheeks themselves 
are anchored in quite safely. But then it's my kind of biting part on my cheek when my teeth meet. My cheeks aren't pushed in. The Rurock range as well, what they have got is different shell sizes that go up in size depending on your size. So if you're a small sized head, the shell will be smaller as well. So it doesn't give you that kind of big head look that you get a lot of times. So it's even that considered, but everything just feels so much nicer on this. With the black visor, which is always my preference, I mean, yes, not ideal for nighttime riding, but to flick it out, it has been the same since the days of the 2.0 where you can actually just rotate those. Was it 90 degrees? Yes, a 90 degree twist. That slips out, new visor in. But the added bonus, because you don't have these little side bits that you need to clip off and clip onto your new lens, there's, it's changing the lens on this is even quicker. That is stunning. I cannot wait to try this out, which will be in the next couple of weeks. Fantastic. I would still say that the 2.0, even the version one, if you can't get your hands on a really decent deal for a version one, I would still consider it. However, version three, tops 2.0 again having said that all the version 2.0s out there are still so high upon their game they, they are still fantastic helmets but the 3.0 just goes that step beyond i am super happy with that excellent right so that is all from me for this kind of impromptu video but if you like what you see we've got this bmw r100 that's been dismantled tonight. Micro 490 video with new forks, the Ducati video and the mongrel as well at the back there. Then subscribe, follow me on Instagram and head to the link down below if you want to buy yourself a Rurok helmet. And there will be discount codes and everything. As I get them, I will give them to you. So until next time, see ya.